Hi, I'm Professor Hitch, and today I want to take you through how to do research using scholarly databases that might be available at your local college. As you can see, I appear to be on a library homepage right here. If I scroll to the top, you can see this is the Saddleback College Library homepage. If you go to Saddleback College, great. If you don't, go ahead and spend a couple minutes trying to find your version of this at whatever college or university you do go to. Um, I assure you, that, like every college is going to have one of these. Now that you're here, I want to show you roughly where you should go to get started. When you're on the library homepage, the thing that you need to look for is something called article databases. Sometimes you might see something that says databases A through Z, general databases, databases by subject. Anytime you see the word databases, you know you're on the right track. For the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to go to list of databases A through Z. Okay. Now, if you've watched my scholarly journal article video, you know that a database is a place where a whole bunch of scholarly journals have all been put into one location for you to do research on. Um, scholarly journal databases that you're going to find at a college will be much more effective than any Google Scholar database that you can access. The reason being, these databases cost money. Part of the tuition that you pay each year, part of the money you're putting into the school system is going so that the library can spend a substantial amount of money getting you all access to these sources. It's also why anytime you try to log on to one of these sources from home, you get stopped with a username password wall where you have to confirm basically that you are in fact a student. Now, when you're on this page, I think it would be really easy to get overwhelmed because there are just so many databases. One thing I want to point out to you right now is that each database should have some kind of description beneath it so that you have a general sense of what's in the database. But because there are so many in question, I want to give you a sense of like where are some good places to start. One place that I really enjoy quite a bit is something called opposing viewpoints in context. Let's see if this works. Fingers crossed. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so <laughs> opposing viewpoints in context. Um, it's from the company Gale. It's not too relevant, but that's why you're seeing Gale in some places on the screen. What you do with Gale opposing viewpoints in context is you look up any topic you want to look up. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'll look up happiness. Then, depending on what you look up, you're going to run into one of two things. You'll either run into a general search page that looks something like this, or if I modify my term, you may run into a home page that looks something like this. There is not a huge difference between the home page and the search page. Ultimately, all the information that's available will still be available either way. When you are on either page, you should see the following categories, everything from academic journal to audio. And the fact that these journals are labeled as journals makes your job as a student doing research just so much easier. So let's say that I'm trying to research something from an academic journal and my teacher has told me it needs to be peer reviewed, great. Awesome, I have 297 options, that's great. But in addition to that, I'm, I'm looking at all of these things and I'm seeing a bunch of red. Content level five. Uh, red can't be good. Um, what content level is an indicator of is how complicated this thing would be to read. By modifying your content level and focusing on things that are perhaps low level first, you can make the job of researching much easier. 
So reflecting back and looking forward, this is a three a level three content level article. This is probably a really good place to start. And then as I learn more about my topic, I can start to filter in level four, level five articles. Let's go back though. So basically the thing that I like about opposing viewpoints in context is how easy and accessible and how sorted this information is. It's all labeled. You've got academic journals, biographies, news, magazines, images. Viewpoints are really interesting. Um, viewpoints kind of how they sound are essays with a particular viewpoint, a bias. And so sometimes, you know, if you're not really sure what side of the issue you stand on, you may want to start by reading a viewpoint. Once you've read a couple of viewpoints and you've developed an opinion on the topic, jump over to news articles or to academic journals. By the time you get to this point, you should hopefully have an idea what you're going to be searching for. With that in mind, I wanna jump back to our article databases and point out two more that I think you might be interested in using. So opposing viewpoints in context, as the name suggests, is good for today's hottest social issues. It's a good place to go for an argumentative essay, but not all essays are argumentative. So where are some other places you can go? You can check out JSTOR. JSTOR is a good multi-purpose database. It's got a little bit of everything in there and um, I think it will serve you all really well. It works about the same way. You type in your search term and Let's go. The thing that I like about JSTOR um, that's not as readily and easily available as it is on opposing viewpoints in context is that you have a button to cite items. How cool is that? I just press copy and I'm done. I've got the correct MLA citation. I don't have to think about it. That's a huge plus to using JSTOR. Additionally, you can download a PDF. Why, how, how could that be helpful? What is that accomplishing? Well, we'll find out if my PDF ever downloads. Ah, there we go, okay. So I'm researching happiness, keep that in mind. Um, and maybe I've decided, let's see. Well, I'm seeing the word Aristotle a lot, the name Aristotle. I would like to see how many times Aristotle is actually quoted in this. Jesus, 41 times. What I'm doing up here in this tiny little corner of the screen is I've pressed Command F on my Mac keyboard, but you could also press Control F on a Windows keyboard, and you can search a document by key terms. Why is that important? Well. If you've already been writing your essay and you have a general sense of what you're looking for, why bother reading all of these many pages? Wow, it just keeps going when you can search for key terms. That should be a huge time saver. Now, if we were to go through this, what we might find at a certain point, maybe not, they all seem like they're journal articles. Well, we can adjust that here. Uh, we can adjust the publication date. Let's say nothing before 2010. And this is kind of interesting. So misrepresenting Chinese folk happiness, a critique of a study. If I wanted to narrow down my focus with happiness to say American studies, I wanted to know what American happiness is about, I could narrow down the subject. Those are some of the basic things that you need to know to navigate through JSTOR. There is one more database that I'd like to show you in this brief survey of how to research using databases, and that would be Academic Search Complete. Academic Search Complete is very, very cool. It's run by EBSCO. That's why you're seeing the logo up there. 
But unlike most databases, this database is actually a database of multiple databases. What do I mean by that? We could find out if the pop-up ever, oh, nope, oh, that's something totally different, huh? Well, clearly I should have tried to do this before starting the video. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Ignore that. <laughs> anyway, uh, as you can see here, these are all the databases that EBSCO owns. And so you can use Academic Search Complete to search through literally dozens of databases all at once. Imagine the search power there. Let's say that you hadn't been finding sources for happiness or for whatever little thing you might be researching. There's just no way you're not going to find something when you're searching literally dozens of databases. And the next page would prove us right, 190,000 different sources. That's awesome. Much like JSTOR, you can download the PDF. That's great. In addition to that, let's see. There is still a cite button as well, so you can still create a citation. Uh, you will have to scroll down to get to MLA. Yep, here we go. That information is there, and you can, of course, mess around in advanced search and look for things like scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles. Great. You can make sure that you're only receiving full text responses. That's great. How much of a tease is that? getting results and it's only half a page long and so on as you scroll through here i'm not going to go through all of them right now because i don't think that they're all necessarily important if you want to combine a word with happiness like let's say i wanted to look up um gamers being happy how will that change my results i've got one that's interesting <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was expecting. Uh, but great, there you go. So that's another way of narrowing down your search terms until you've got something very, very specific. If I wanted to get more results, I might probably have to start getting rid of some of these current search terms, like apply equivalent subjects or scholarly peer-reviewed journals. Well, there are very many more databases that we could cover today. Those three will serve you pretty, pretty well in most of the research that you would be doing in a freshman comp or a critical thinking course. With that in mind, we are at the end of the video. Good luck.